Here at the uh, MSJ and the Fairhaven JV squad as the ball tips up and we're at MSJ's gymnasium and it'll be Fairhaven obviously in the dark blue uniforms and eight minute quarters over time if necessary and I'll go through the JV rosters for both sides because this is like I said it's my first time seeing both of these JV teams play. I'll have the first time out probably I'll go to the huddle and I'll do the uh, the names and numbers for you. There's a cut inside shot was partially blocked by Lenzillo. He'll give it off to Coralou. So nice defensive play by the Mounties right there and Coralou will bring it up and Guarneri will Looks like he's going to run the point. Gilbert, open, told to shoot it, and be off the mark with that three-pointer. Briere kept it alive. It'll be chased down by Charles Guarneri again, and he'll just go between circles and reset the offense. And again, this is MSJ's home court. And it's tipped around, and it'll be in the Fairhaven's possession now, and he'll bring it up the floor, and this is Uber with the basketball. So Uber wearing number 20 in dark blue for Fairhaven. He'll snap the pass off on that side to Fontaine. Go down inside and travel called. I might have missed it because I was in between looking at the roster, but Pat Greeno and Peter Bissell out there doing the officiating. And Guarneri going to penetrate. He got fouled at the top of the paint. So it'll be on the drive. It'll be a possession foul out of bounds. Blocking foul called. And that's the first foul of the ball game. And it'll be assessed to Dakota Uber, number 20. So Lenzilla will. Yeah, my camera has to warm up from sitting out in the cold. There we go. We'll get it into Guarneri. Lanzillo likes that three ball and can't get the bounce to go his way. It'll be a big rebound ripped down there by Uber, and he'll bring it into the front court now. Not only did he get the rebound, but he will bring the ball between circles like the point guard and help set the table. That's Briere defensively there, number 14. Now Gilbert, number five. And that'll be chased down by Reed. Andrew Reed wearing number 15. And... We have no score right now. And that, I'm about to say change, but it didn't. And Briere will get the defensive boards so and give it out to Coralou. And he's told to push the ball and get the tempo going. There it is quickly to Lanzillo. He looked at the arc, set his feet, but passed up the shot. And he'll swing it over now. And this is going to be Coralou up. And no. Had an open look at that three ball. And it'll be saved by Lanzillo. And they'll, MSJ will get a second chance here. Just trying to identify the defense being played out there by Fairhaven. Looks like a man-to-man. -man, and it is a man-to-man. Baseline and Guarneri will bring it all the way back around. Well, you know, it wasn't a bad play. There's no shot clock to worry about. And whatever the play was, he didn't like it. So instead of forcing it up, he just reset the table offensively. Gilbert looking inside. Briere trying to post up. And Mache being very patient from the sideline. Here their head coaches. Tell them to run it again, and they will. So with 534 to go. In the first quarter, Briere's shot up. Might have been tipped, and that's going to be Uber kept alive. And Uber will grab the ball off the uh, in line, and he'll again be covered by Lanzillo as he'll bring the ball behind the back, cross the logo at midcourt, kill the dribble between circles, and they'll push it inside. Reed, left-hander, got it. Very nice move. Soft shot, and will go in. So the Slater's JV squad will get the first score of the basketball game, making it 2 nothing with five minutes to go in the first quarter of play. Corneri to Corlew. And if I'm mispronouncing anybody's name, I apologize. Like I said, it's the first time I've seen the players. And Guarneri likes the oh, great look and nice roll. And the finish by Lanzillo. What a pass from Guarneri. Yeah, bringing the ball up now will be Kevin Hurd. And Corlew on Hurd. And that's going to be an over and back. Yeah, because possession never changed on that defensive touch. So then he went back with the midcourt stripe. That was a no-no, and Lanzillo, who's got the game's only basket, will actually take the ball out of bounds. And Guarneri, just no pressure, just stepped up and received the uh, little handoff. So Guarneri, who played uh, varsity football along with Gilbert out there for MSJ. Heard, read the play, heard, couldn't outreach Gilbert. So Gilbert able to retrieve the basketball. And MSJ now to the front court. 2-2 the score, 422 to go in the first quarter, and that will be around the rim and no good. And that time... It was Matt Graziano for, for Haven that got in there and kept the ball alive and gained possession for his team. And Lanzillo reaching around. Uber slapped the ball out of bounds. Coming in for Fairhaven now will be Jesse Dodge, number 10. And Jack Foley, 21 for MSJ. Joe Kuchar, number Well, I see him out there. He's got to identify as number 10. I go out for he turned sideways, and Pritchard is 13. Yep, that's correct. So those are all MSJ changes besides the uh, one Slater change that I named. 
Huber, baseline. Boy, nice pass. Is everybody committed to him? And will it count? The basket's good. Pat Greenall with the call here. He'll be Pritchard with the foul, and that will send Graziano to the line. So they'll give Fairhaven their first lead at 4-2 to two and a chance to uh, complete the three-point play here. And they get set. They confirm that it's one shot. Basket was good. So Graziano taking his time. Right-handed shot. And not a lot of coil there, but tipped around and chased down by Graziano. So the Fairhaven squad, the JV squad, will... Get another chance here possession-wise. It's Fontaine all the way in, up, and another foul on the drive. And Pritchard, I believe, just picked up his second foul. That's back-to-back -back fouls on Pritchard, and that will send Fontaine to the line now, and that will stop the clock with 3.55 to go in the first quarter. And a lot of times these JV games last tape-wise, time-wise, a lot longer than the uh, varsity games. Not saying that's going to be the case tonight. But a lot of times... Just a lot of turnovers and choppiness and play and fouls and the clock stops for all that stuff. And for Fairhaven, we got a change coming in there. Colin Mortensen, number 30, making his first appearance in the basketball game with 3.55 to go in the first quarter for Fairhaven. In case you haven't figured it out yet, Fairhaven in the dark blue uniforms, and that's good. 5-2, to two, Fairhaven with the lead. And Guarnieri running with Uber, shoulder to shoulder, able to get it in the front court. Kicks it out, and that's going to be up and a little bit long and strong for Kucher. And that's going to be stolen away by Reed. Yeah, I lost the whole action here. Or he not stolen away, but regained by Reed because what I was trying to do was read my roster. So there's Mortensen. And picked up, and here comes Pritchard. On the steal, the transition, and no good. Ball bat around Guarnieri, up, no good. A couple chances for MSJ from in close. They just couldn't finish. The shot's off, and Dodge will bring the ball down now. Foley defensively right there will pick him up. Of course, I've been taping Jack Foley since fourth grade basketball, or fifth grade basketball. And there's the turnaround, another lefty, and it's good. And Corlew going to be coming back in the ballgame now for MSJ. There's Guarnieri. Gonna fade over to the corner, and Huber there picking him up defensively. Foley to the elbow, and Dodge followed him there. And boy, Kucher, the strong hands, gets the ball back. Might have been fouled on the drive. Yeah, that is the call, and that'll become the second personal foul, or team foul, second team foul on Fairhaven. First foul on Mortensen as Gilbert, number five, Colin Gilbert, and Gorlu coming in for MSJ. That's Gilbert looking to complete the pass. We'll get it inside. Corlew bump fakes and got it. Nice finish by Cor for Corlew and a good pass. Cuts the lead to 7-4, to four, Fairhaven. As Huber. Out from the knee of Mortensen. He's able to chase it down. And Pritchard with the steal and pulling away. Pritchard going up and block and a foul. Mortensen hustled back. It looked like he made a block. Clean, but must have got him with the body. Yeah, yeah, okay. So that will send Pritchard to the line, and he should be getting a couple free throws out of this, followed in the act of shooting. So in a 7-4 game, that is the third team foul on Fairhaven, and a second personal foul on Mortensen. I tell you, he hustled back to get in position to try to make the defensive play. As Zach Eaton, number 31, coming in for Mortensen, who's holding his left upper arm. So maybe Mortensen... Pulled something on the block, but he'll sit down now. As Pritchard. Got it. Seven to six now. Now he's down by just one. We're at the MSJ Gym, Munger Vision, bringing you this JV basketball game. And boy, Foley with the good defense right up there. Nice catch by Fairhaven's number 14, Fontaine. Scott. Number, or Eaton, number 31, had the touch, and they try to go baseline to him. They did, and he got it. Boy, I tell you, that's a great entry pass down low. Got the defender trying to chase from behind, and Corlu into the front court. Going to set up the play to Kucher. Kucher hits fully up between circles. No, just wheel it around to that rally wanted to, but Pritchard was covered by Reed. 
nine to six for Haven JV squad. In the lead, and uh, again, all these good JV teams, varsity teams from Fairhaven, and that's going to be Reed picking up the foul on the reach. Yeah. Yeah, and they'll take it out on the far side, and it will be Gilbert who will take the ball out of bounds. And they're trying to get it to Pritchard, and they'll just lob it over the top. And actually, I think they're trying to probably get it to Corloop, but they cut him off tonight the basketball. Well, he's in the paint. He's got to get out of there. That could easily be a three-second call. Yeah, he just finally stepped out. Now he's got away with one there, and they'll just reset the offense. So they want to run that motion. Got uh, CSJ basketball coming up for you on Munger Vision. I tell you, I got a. Well, I plan on being there, whether things work out or not. But CSJ men taking on Castle State College men, and hopefully, I'll work out where I can do the game fully in the corner, couldn't throw the taller defender, and the ball tipped around, and Reed now with less than a minute, 58 seconds to go. Oh, I had a wide open man and blew up. Yep, he was so open eating, they couldn't give him the ball. That's how open he was, and that happens, seriously. As Briere will come in the ball game for Pritchard. Pritchard sitting down with those two fouls fully. We'll get the play call from the sideline, and I don't believe they're gonna hold for the last shot intentionally here. Jack Foley keeping that dribble alive, and the defender not close enough to start the count. It's Jesse Dodge over there on the defense. Foley penetrated to Briere, just a little bit short as Corlew saved the ball and came back in bounds to Hurd. Reed with the grab, and they'll hit the trailer on the play, which is Dodge. 30 seconds left in this first quarter. Nine to six, Fairhaven has the ball and got the lead. Hurd being covered by Gilbert, and there's Eaton coming out to make the grab rear there defensively. Yeah, they are waiting for the last shot for Haven. Like I said, it took over just about 30 seconds. And I tell you, they had the nice cut again, and that pass just a tad bit high. And it'll go now to play, and it'll become MSJ's turn now to try to take the last shot. Foley passed up the open three, four seconds, three seconds. On the drive, Corlew, it'll count if it goes up and that's the quarter, nine to six for Avis JB squad with the lead on Munger Vision. You can see what I can see here at the MSJ gym. That's gonna be MSJ with the first possession of the second quarter. And what they have is Gilbert number five out there. Foley 21, Breer 14, Kucher number 10, and Lanzillo 22. That's the five on the floor for MSJ. And I'll catch up. I can see Uber 20 out there for Fairhaven. And I'm just trying to see some more numbers. Heard number 11. 15 is Reed. 14 is Fontaine. And 10 is Dodge. And I think I've got everybody for Fairhaven. If I missed somebody, I apologize. But there wasn't a time I don't believe in that first quarter, so I couldn't read the rosters to you. But at some point, I can't imagine them not being a timeout. Jack Clifford, the head coach at Fairhaven's JV squad. Geez, he's done a long time. I'm not, honest, I don't know how many years Jack's done it, but seems like he's been there for at least seven, eight years. So there's the timeout taken. So it'll be the first timeout. And there's Mr. Clifford right there. And we'll read his, since we're looking at him, we'll read his roster to you. Jesse Dodge wears number 10. Kevin Hurd is 11, Cameron Hughes wears 13, Alex Fontaine 14, Andrew Reed is 15, Dakota Uber 20, Matt Graziano 23, Pat Bowen 24, Colin Mortensen number 30, Zach Eaton 31, and Michael Scott is 32. And again, you're watching Channel 15 Sports, Munger Vision to be exact. You can also go to pegtv.com, click video on demand. You can watch local sports action anytime, anywhere, free of charge on the internet. If things work out tonight and I stick around, you can see the varsity version of MSJ Fairhaven at a later date on Peg TV, or just like I said, anytime you want to go on to the internet, you can watch it on pegtv.com. And you can see the grab there by Hurd. That's Kucher on him. And Dodge came back to meet the pass. Jack Foley on him defensively. Huber! Fouled on the drive. Did he count it? That's all I got to wait and see here. Basket is good, Mr. Greeno says. Of course, Mr. Greeno's son, had a, Adam Greeno, had a very distinguished career, career here at MSJ. 1,000 point score. 
1,100 points even to be exact. His name's up on that banner that they have here in the gym commemorating 1,000 point scores. 12 to six now, Fairhaven's lead is at six. And team foul wise, that's the, I don't think that's correct, but there's three team fouls on the uh, MSA squad for him, Fairhaven. And he'll count that, so yeah. And I think it's gonna be Jack Foley, yeah, who will get the. Yeah, and then Pritchard's at the scores table. The basket was good by Uber. Makes it 14 to six. And Breer coming out for MSJ and Pritchard going in for MSJ with two fouls. So we'll, we will look at the MSJ huddle. I'll read the names to you real quickly. Number three is Dewey Corlew. Number four, I don't see him here, but it's Drew Altabell, Colin Gilbert's number five, Joe Kuchar 10, Nolan Pritchard 13, Tom Breer. Number 14, Charles Guarneri is 20, Jack Foley 21, and Zach Lanzillo number 22. And so Uber now after the timeout coming back to step up to the free throw line, try and increase that lead to 15 to nine, or 15 to six, excuse me. Each team with four team fouls apiece and that shot will be off the mark. Well, Uber was out of bounds. He got in here quick. I mean, what uh, athletic ability by Uber, but on his momentum, momentum carried him out of bounds. Jack Foley going to run the point this trip down the floor. He'll be guided there by Dodge number 10. As that's Pritchard with the ball fake. Greed on him. Cooch will come out now and he'll again looking for something to happen on the cut inside. And there's just nothing happening right now. There, Lanzillo will take the bump and a nice pass to Gilbert and got it. What a patient, patient trip that time by the MSJ offensive uh, squad and it paid off. A nice basket, an easy basket. Well, not easy, a higher percentage shot. There is actually no such thing as an easy basket. If you ever saw me shoot around, you would know that's the truth. See, so yeah, I got CSJ basketball coming up for you. At least the men's. I'll see how things go on the other side, but West Rutland. Basketball coming up for you. And on the shot. Uh, if Pritchard, that's his third foul. That was after the shot. There's a push called on Pritchard, and it'll be just possession out of bounds to Fairhaven on their baseline. Uber going to take it out. Breer coming in now for Pritchard. Kuchir also coming out, and that's Corlo going to take his spot. And Graziano, 23 in for Fairhaven, and 24 Pat Bowen. Also coming in for Fairhaven, and I believe that's Mr. Bowen's first time in the ball game for the Slaters. Reed just backpedals between circles, and they lob him the basketball, and he'll penetrate right past Lanzillo. Nice step up, help wise by Briere defensively, but that left the weak side open for that put back rebound and makes it a 16 to 8 game now. Fairhaven's JV squad with the eight point lead. It's Corlew. On that right side, Breer bombing three ball. Nope. And it'll be Breer bringing it back to Foley as they get an offensive set now. And that's going to be Foley waiting and bouncing it back to uh, Breer on his left side. Killed the dribble and needs somebody to help him out. And boy, that was just disaster right there as Breer kind of early on the dribble killing it. And that set him up not to go anywhere with the basketball. So dodge. Keeping the dribble alive, waits for Reed to come out on the elbow. He's going to put up with that left-handed shot and drain it. Three ball for Reed and boy, nothing but twine coming down through. 19 to eight for Haven's JV squad. Jack Foley putting it up and a little bit too much muscle on it and Mache will get the rebound back and they'll reset that offense. You can see that Corlew flicked the wrist. He wanted Briere to come to this near side of the court. Lanzillo trying to create a pass lane to go get the ball delivered to him inside. Fully on the drive was fouled. I believe it's on Fairhaven. Yes, I missed the number. I missed the call, but I'll wait. I'll catch up to it here in a second. Uh, on Jesse Dodge. So this is his first personal foul. Team's fifth. Each team with five team fouls apiece. 425 to go in the half, and that shot. No good, and the rebound will come down to Uber. Boy, he's gotten at least four rebounds that I can recall here in the first half, and good-looking ball player, Dakota Uber is. 
That time Graziano had the right idea, was looking for the uh, cut by his teammate along that baseline pass, just, just a little bit too tall for him. As Corlew receives the play call from the sideline. And Jack Clifford, the head coach over at the JV side for Fairhaven. And in case you haven't figured it out yet, we're at the MSJ Gymnasium. And Uber, again with the basketball. Boy, he just seems to have a uh, knack here in this first half. The first time I've ever seen him, but he seems to have a knack for being around the, the ball all the time, Uber does. Right place, right time, makes stuff happen. Uber off the dribble. Sealed off from the baseline by Corlew. Good defense. Reed going back up, and no. Kept alive. We have a push call on Graziano on the rebounding action. He got a little clear out with the uh, forearm. Actually assessed it to Uber, so okay. That'll be the second foul on Uber and the sixth team foul on Fairhaven. So the next foul that Fairhaven commits will lead to the one and one, at least the one and one. Foley wants to go down inside to Lanzillo and great save. Great save. Who was Dodge? Jesse Dodge down there with a good play as Fontaine 14 now. Go ahead and check in for Uber for Fairhaven. Foley will creep up into the backcourt, put a little pressure on in the backside. There's Fontaine looking for Reed, and Corlew had him pretty much sealed off this time. Graziano, great spot down low, can't convert it. Kept the line, Fontaine's going to step to the hole. No. Boy, that's some great offensive rebounding. Great offensive rebounding by Fairhaven. They didn't get any points out of it, but man. That's the kind of thing that makes coach get a big grin. Lancillo with a three ball. You know, when you look at the scoreboard, it's only an eight point lead for Fairhaven. That's a big basket by Lanzillo. It had been a long time. I couldn't tell you an exact count, but it had been a while since they'd had any points from the JV squad. Graziano inside to Reed, turns and the fade away off the glass and then around the rim and in. Pretty shot by Reed, and that's a nice job of getting the ball to him down low like that. Gilbert catches, fires, rims out on him. It's a one and done as Graziano got the rebound. We'll give it to Dodge. Dodge working against Foley. We'll spin to the near side of the court. Graziano will roll the ball down side to Fontaine, puts it up, and this time it's going to be a good box out by Lanzillo. 21 to 11, Fairhaven. Kucher penetrates, and oh, what a nice move. He didn't get the basket, but that was a very aggressive, creative move by Kucher. Of course, for several years, his dad, Jerry, helped coach the football team here at MSA. I've seen his son play basketball at the younger levels. Very good athlete, very, very good athlete. And blocked on the outside. I believe it was Reed that blocked it. Well, Graziano beat the defense down the floor, and Lancillo. What, what, what the call's there is not the hand that blocked the shot. The hand on the ball was clean. It was his free hand. When you go back and watch it, his free hand, he put his hand right on the man's hip. And that's what the call was. The non-blocking hand was on the shooter, on his hip, and that's what the push became. That was an excellent call. And Pritchard coming in for Corlew. That's an MSJ change, and Mortensen He's okay. Remember, he left the game with a, with a flex in his upper arm area, and he seems to be all right. So Mortensen back in the ballgame. And Graziano, no. 21 to 11, and that's the first foul also on Lanzillo. Each team with six fouls apiece in just a minute, 21 to go in the half. Foley. Thought about penetrating. Dodge moving those feet defensively out there for Fairhaven. Kept him from doing that. And that's just a tough pass. It was tipped by Reed, and I think they got a break on that call. So MSJ will retain possession, and I'll go down in the far corner of the MSJ gym. And there's Reed with the steal. He might have carried it. No, he double dribbled, they said. Yeah. Almost came up with the good pick. So over on the far side will be Lancillo. Again, still 66 seconds left in this opening half of play. 
tell you, it's been a very unemotional game on the floor for MSJ. And sometimes, you, can, you know, emotion can help lead to intensity. And right now, it's just a very, well, vanilla looking squad out there for MSJ. That's up and no. It was Graziano this time that got the rebound. Uber and Graziano have done a nice job on the boards for Fairhaven. Oh, that was blocked by Lanzillo. Mortensen turned, took the shot, and Lanzillo with the block. That was Kucher with the push. Lanzillo on the drive. Gave the ball back to Gilbert. Oh, pretty play. No basket, but a very pretty play. Up and got it. Whoa, high, high shot. It drops down through 21-13. And there's a pass over to Dodge. He glanced at the clock, saw there's still eight seconds, and a blocking foul on Pritchard. Or push, they call it. Either or. And they'll have 6.4 seconds on the clock, and one and one right here for the free throws. Corlew coming in for Pritchard, who's going to sit with the four fouls. I'm not sure if that's why he's coming out. I mean, it'd be my first guess if protecting him from the fifth foul or if Corlew might be a better threat to take a long range shot here with 6.4 seconds left. Yeah, and Dodge will make that first shot. It'd be 22 to 13 now. And he'll get them both. That's will land Zillow. Get a lot of time left. 6.4 seconds is, well, they could have gotten a good shot. I've said Fairhaven will come down through Fontaine. will miss it. Mortensen up and blocked again. And that's Lanzillo with a couple blocks and a great finish to the first half. That sees Fairhaven's JV squad with a 23-13 lead over MSJ JV from the MSJ gym on Munger Vision. So we'll Garnieri out there now I, for MSJ wearing number 20. I think he set the second quarter. And it's a speculation on my part because I, I get no communications to me. I believe he's going to split time between varsity and JV, so they're trying to save a couple quarters, at least one quarter, if not two quarters. So, so Guarneri out there for MSJ, along with Briere, Gilbert, Lanzillo. I need one more body. Oh, Corlu out there. And that's Reed with the basketball. He's got Fontaine out there. Uber, Graziano, and we have a travel call. And... I need one more by Hurd, number 11. That's the five out there for Fairhaven. So that's the five for each side getting a start here in the third quarter from the MSJ gym. Boy, Corlu left open all kinds of time, and oh, that thing halfway down the cylinder and popped back out. It was a good, I mean, that's his shot. That's a good choice for him right there. And it's nothing wrong with the shot. Just didn't drop for him. It's a 10 point for Haven lead, and we played almost a minute here of the third quarter in Fontaine with a few pivots. And what a nice job. Fontaine just did a 360 spin and then went by his defender. Lanzillo with one three-pointer already and got another one right there. Lanzillo with a three ball for MSJ. He's got at least six points tonight. Fontaine receives the long pass at midcourt and see so we'll find a point guard now. Yeah, he'll come out and Uber will step to the basketball. It's gonna be Corlu on Uber and there's the grab by Hurd. Gilbert on Hurd, and Gilbert slapped the ball away. Hurd able to chase it down. He'll get in the paint, and there's the help defense, and Lanzillo definitely got a piece of that. I could hear the hand on the ball, so good help defense by Lanzillo, and then Carey called. So I thought a couple times in the first half that I thought they could have called the, the palm or the carry on him. He has a unique, very distinctive style of dribbling the basketball. As that comes up around Graziano's earlobes, and he's able to make the catch. You're watching Munger Vision, which means it must be on Peg TV or you're on the internet at Peg TV. Heard, oh, nobody talked defensively. Heard missed the bunny, but again, they got a, two MSA defenders with their back to the play. Didn't see it. Nobody talking out there. You know, physical play is, you know, obviously important, but moving those lips and talking, communicating out there to each other, that's what makes great defenses. Or that's what makes teams have great defenses. You got able to communicate. Heard with the touch. It's Jack Foley off the bench for MSJ. Looks like he's getting set to come in. There's the catch. Corlew went defensively hard at the 
offensive player, which was Uber. Uber just went and literally took the ball away from three MSJ players. I tell you, this Uber guy, he's played a heck of a basketball game. He's done very good. That shouldn't be a backcourt, no. And there's a trip on Corlew. Or did he step out of bounds? Let's see what the call is here. It looks like it'll be a trip. Oh, stepped out of bounds, okay. I, I, I'm not making fun of the players or the coaches. I honestly didn't understand the arm signal. I didn't know what the arm signal was. It was he stepped out of bounds and ball went over to MSJ. It's Guineri. Oh, look at that. Moved to the hoop like a herd of buffalo and didn't make the basket. And then Guineri will pick up the foul. And it's a push call. That'll be Charles Guineri's first personal foul, the first team foul of the second half. And now Amishay going to extend the defense into the backcourt. And Dodge with the grab will bring it right back to Uber. Graziano, that's a great press break. He didn't make the basket, but they ran the press break beautiful as he came in from the wing along the baseline and just left the shot soft. Guarneri going to explode to the baseline. There's the kick out. Kuchir, let the defender go by. Lanzillo on the boards, and wow. I'm not sure why he just didn't go up conventionally with the shot, but it was different to watch. And Gilbert came down with the basketball. Somehow Guarneri got it out of a pile. This is another three ball for Lanzillo. No. And this time Reed with the short hands will make the grab, hold on to the basketball, and Uber going to bring it up. Uber. A oh, great entry pass to Fontaine, and nope. He kind of thought it looked like you or Fontaine was just a little bit like a step further out than what he really wanted to be to take that shot. It's going to stay down on the baseline with Fairhaven's JV squad. They're up 25 to 16 with 421 to go in the third quarter. Again, West Rutland basketball coming up on Munger Vision. CSJ basketball coming up on Munger Vision. Wow. See, now that's that's a great illustration of something right there. The whole MSJ bench started screaming over the back. And first of all, I, I've talked to many officials. It, over the, there is no over the back. There's a push from behind. But what happened there was the uh, Hubert, number 20, is taller. He jumped completely straight up in the air, no contact with the man in front of him, the opponent in front of him, and just use his jump and his height advantage to just go up, get the ball and bring it down. There was no push, no contact, no quote unquote over the back. And here comes Lanzillo. He's been allowed the MSJ offense tonight, so they have 16 points, and I know he's got at least six points. That's, can't do percentages for you because I went to Rowland High School and See how good that much that did me. But that's, you know, at least six of 16 points means he's got a lot of their points. Six of them. <laughs> Fontaine coming out for Fairhaven and Zach Eaton coming back into the ballgame now. Wearing number 31 in dark blue for Fairhaven. And that shot by Lanzillo. Nope. And the rebound is tied up between Gilbert and Eaton, and they say it's going to be white basketball, so Michelle will have the ball, and this will be Lanzillo taking the ball out of bounds. Lanzillo to Guarneri, right back to Lanzillo. Wanted to roll the pass inside to Gilbert, and a nice play was by Graziano as he reached around and slapped the ball away. The dribble by Reed, and he'll give it off now to Uber. Briere at the scorer's table for MSA. He's going to be checking him. Foley comes up with a loose ball, and He's got the push right up the middle, fully going to go up, under, and almost made the basket. That's transition now as the game opens up, and Gilbert with the steal as he took it away from Uber. Foley again will wait at the top of the arc, make the stutter step move, then juke back outside to the elbow, working off the screen set by Kuchar as between circles will be Guarneri with the grab. And short. I'm not sure that's was the best shot selection right there as he just got the call to start running the motion offense from the bench and he put up the three ball. It really wasn't a set squared up shot, but and Reed will be called for the foul for Fairhaven. There's now Breer coming in and I'm looking for the ball. There it is. Pat Greeno with the ball down from the Fairhaven bench. 
as Lanzillo and Guarneri will work the backcourt for MSJ. Lanzillo with the screen, then he rolled and really wasn't open there to get him the ball. 2.52 to go in the third quarter, 27-16 Fairhaven. It's really been almost a carbon copy of the first half. Yeah, on the drive, it'll be Uber with the blocking foul. And should be no shots as that's the third team foul. Third foul on Uber. And they're gonna allow Fontaine to come in for Uber and that's what they're gonna do. Sit Uber down with the three fouls and protect him here with 239 left in the third quarter. Lanzillo to Guarneri. And yeah, a couple things there. Briere really hadn't, hadn't had a chance to seal off and create a passing lane to get him a ball and, and it just was an errant pass into a very crowded, congested area. As Reed, it will bring the ball in the front court. Fontaine going to take it all the way in, got stripped of the basketball. Foley will pick it up for the Mounties. Long pass to Lanzillo, and boy, he tiptoed inbounds. Briere off balance with that three ball, and then Fairhaven will come down and control the basketball. And you see Eaton then will match up with Briere as they Give the ball up to Graziano. Fontaine up, blocked by Kuchar. Well timed block by Kuchar. Reed, that left handed shot will get it. By that time, that really was his advantage because it opened up. Being a lefty, his shooting hand was open. As Guarneri might have carried the ball. Absolutely. Second time MSA JV player has been called for that palm or the carry, whatever the uh, lingo is nowadays. but. 29-16 for Hamas JV squad with 1.44 to go. In the third quarter, in Jesse Dodge, number 10, came back and he's been inserted in the ball game and he's gonna bring the ball in the front court and he'll give the pass off to Reed and Eaton. To Graziano and Fontaine again coming along the baseline was open, ball will go off from the hands of Corlew, who's a Mountie, and that'll become Fairhaven basketball, and they'll have it down in the corner of the MSJ gym. And they look to put the ball in play, it's lobbed up. And Briere with the steal. Up and got it. Been a long time between points for MSJ. Again, you look at the scoreboard, and they're right there, I mean, they're they were run away from as Kuchar made the steal and then just lost the handle on it out of bounds. And Gilbert coming in for Lanzillo for MSJ. 29 to 18 for Havens with the lead with the ball and they've got a minute 11 seconds to work with in the third quarter. Pat Bowen coming in now for Fairhaven number 24, Patrick Bowen. So Mounties extending the defense into the backcourt and Dodge. To read. And Corlew able to lean into him and stop the progress of the ball from coming up the court. And Reed lost the dribble, dodge at the elbow, and he'll go between the legs fully there defensively. And now they'll just step out with Bowen. I don't think they want the big guy handling the ball up top like that, but oh, Reed was open and delivered the pass. He was there. They'll reset the offense with 40 seconds to go in the third quarter. Dodge up and they'll go out of bounds and it'll be MSJ ball with 32.4 seconds to go. Foley glancing at the clock and it's possible they could probably play for the last shot. I don't, I don't really, no, I'm not privy to the uh, philosophy here. But yeah, Foley saw the baseline and Got inside and tried to create a basket. Up ahead to Graziano, got it. They just beat the MSA defense to the baseline and pushes the lead to 13 at 31-18. And it'll bounce toward the bench and that's gonna be it. Reed will be saved, but it'll be a Fairhaven lead of 31-18 over MSA heading into the fourth quarter play on JV basketball. Actually, Munger Vision bringing it to you. 
So Reed and Fairhaven will get the first possession of the fourth quarter. And that's it. Jesse Dodge with the ball. And that's Jack Foley who played real solid in that third quarter out there defensively. Machine a man-to-man -man defense to start off the fourth quarter. Reed and Corlew have been a good matchup tonight. Now it is stolen away by Foley and he's got some ideas of taking to the hole. And then the ball ends up out of bounds. Yeah. Well, it made a good defensive play. Just didn't translate into points at the other end. And it'll be Reed in the uh, near corner, the MSJ gym, to Dodge, who went up and got that ball. Nice job by Dodge going up to get that pass. Breer almost came up with the steal, and on the floor, the foul was committed. Patrick Bowen was heading to the hoop, and he got held. And that's the call. It's been a very well-officiated contest. Boy, Briere with that long reach, able to knock the ball down, make the steal. And Kuchier. To Foley. To Corlew. And that's stolen away by Fontaine. Now he's he's had a real good game, Fontaine has. Look at that little assist. He gets it back and nope. That was too easy. I know there's no such thing as an easy basket. That was a high percentage miss. Begin Fontaine's taking the ball to the hole several times tonight. Uh, seems to have very good offensive instincts out there for Fairhaven. Uh, MSA being very deliberate on this half court set, and Pierre likes that three ball, though Tom does. And the basket the other end, and the foul will be on Pierre. Reed will get the bucket, chance to go to the line to make a three point play. Oh, you know what? The foul came after the basket was made. There they got there. They corrected it. I was getting all goose bumpy. He corrected it. As Guarneri and Pritchard coming in for Corlew and Briere. Those are MSJ changes. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Points wide, no scores were made, and Guarneri, the other end, no good. 6-10 to go on this JV basketball game, and this will be Dodge bringing the ball down. To Fontaine, and... In Fairhaven, a few times tonight they've you know pushed the ball when they've had the opportunity, and they've been very efficient at that, but they've been most part. I, I think they got a high rating from the coach tonight for their defensive effort and their offensive effort. They've double dribble there by Gilbert. And they'll turn the ball over. He got caught between a pass and, and a dribble there, and it'll be a turnover. And for Haven, needing somebody else in the backcourt as Reed will make his way over toward the in line. And that, I'm not sure what happened there. They're looking for Uber. He came forward and bomb went behind him, but you know what? He ended up with the basketball. Just took the long way to get there. That was interesting. His Fontaine will throw the ball all the way over to Dodge. He went up and couldn't bring this one down, and we'll have the Mounties with the basketball with five and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Three team falls apiece. And Guarneri to Kuchir. Wanted Lanzillo. Reed Stuck with him pretty good. There's the low pass. There's a pass in the low post. Count the basket, Lanzillo. As they're able to post him up this time. Yeah, and that'll be the and one now for Lanzillo. Yeah. And like I said, Lanzillo at least eight points tonight. Probably more than that. I mean, this is unofficial. I'm just trying to recall what I can recall. Yeah, so Lanzillo trying to cut into that 13 point for Haven lead. Taking his time, sighting the basket, and 
We'll put it up. Got it. Now Foley in the back court applying some pressure to Dodge, and Dodge able to run in front of him, get open. This is Huber behind the back, and now he's into the front court over the timeline. And oh, nice cut, nice pass, nice basket. Again, Fair Haven has executed for the most part. Pretty darn good tonight. His Guarneri to the hole, nice hard drive, and again, hard off the backboard, set on the rim, went and dropped for him. Graziano got the rebound, and Graziano gave it up to Uber. Uber has been solid tonight. Very impressive performance by Dakota Uber. This is Graziano. Dodge. Reed faked the jump shot, penetrated. Little jumper, no good. Reed reached in, couldn't control it. Guarneri rips it out of there. Guarneri into the front court. Guarneri, yeah, good decision. Numbers weren't there. Really wasn't an opening to the hole. And he'll just let him set up the half court offense now. Four minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Pritchard got inside, and I believe Pritchard touched it last. Maybe not. No, nope, it's going to be MSJ basketball. So Pritchard's good hustle kept that play alive. And boy, Guarneri with an athletic play there to save the basketball from going out of bounds. Lanzillo, nope. He's had a couple threes tonight. That one looked online, just short. Uber, Graziano. As Mortensen, number 30, back in the basketball game. He had the touch right there. And Dodge being guided by Foley. Dodge directing some traffic as he keeps the dribble alive. And Mortensen now. Huber with the move. Stripped of the basketball. Or did he pass it off? Well, I'm not sure. That was so such great ball handling. He fooled me and got the assist. And the basket was made. And that'll make it 37-21. Fairhaven's JB squad has Corlew. And Gilbert at the scorer's table, and the foul will be on Uber. Uber, I believe, picked up his fourth. Yeah, that is his fourth foul. I don't believe at this juncture of the ball game that's going to really come into much play. With a 16 point lead, Fairhaven. Well, I don't know if they're going to leave him in. They're calling a timeout. So with 3.20 to go, it's 37-21 for Amos JB Squad with lead over MSJ's JB Squad on Munger Vision. There have been a lot of timeouts taken in this complete ball game by either side as Guarneri will make the second shot. and That's Pritchard. With the steal against Dodge. And Pritchard. We got fouled. There's a lot of bodies down there, and the foul will be called on Dodge. So Dodge will pick up the foul. Now we'll stop the clock with 3:10, and that is just the sixteen foul. So one more foul to give by Fairhaven, or not to give. One more foul, and they'll put him a at the line for at least the one-on-one. For Corlu to Pritchard, and now Corlu being guarded by Uber, playing with the four fouls. Corneri with the grab. Up, blocked, up, and got it. Well, that's a great job by Gilbert just sticking with it. Dead serious. He just stuck with it, made the bat. He stayed real calm. 37-24, Fairhaven. Uber snaps a hard pass off on his side to Graziano. Dodge thought about the three ball, pulled it down. Graziano in the paint. Still in the paint, and we'll get out of there in time now. Mortensen inside to Reed. Short rebound will come down to Guarneri. Up ahead to Lanzillo. Got it. He's at least double digits now. Lanzillo. And trying to beat the press off the dribble. Boy, they had a perfect time for the trap. Pritchard just fouled out. They had a good defensive call. And they just failed to pinch the press, the trap. They didn't pinch the trap together. That allowed for Haven to dribble into position. But it was what happened. You saw it happen. And Jack Foley. That's what I was waiting to see. Jack Foley's coming in for Pritchard. 
for MSJ. Yeah, and that's already taken place. So Pritchard, the first person so far to fall out in this contest. Juber just reaches up that big wingspan to his and will make the grab. You can see Mortensen standing there. Mortensen will pivot around. And a travel call. Yeah, I'm waiting to see. It's number 24 coming in. That's Patrick Bowen coming in for Fairhaven. And I believe Briere came back in for MSJ. That is the uh, changes. Foley's pass to Kucher, and then Graziano will seal him off from the baseline. Guarneri got it. That's just real good speed off the dribble by Guarneri. 37-28 as the lead goes to nine now with a minute and a half to go. You were able to navigate to the front court. Gives the ball off to Bowen. And boy, the big man went behind the back. Lanzilla with good pressure on the ball. And then Reed coming back to grab the pass right before Guarneri can make the steal. But they, they let Bowen handle that ball up top. Graziano and Bowen. As Fairhaven has been able to run the wheel here and bring the clock down to 50 seconds in the MSJ gym. And boy, a lot of juice on the ball, but nobody near it to catch it. And it'll be MSJ with the basketball. And it'll be Guarneri running the point. 37-28. And that was blocked by Bowen as he got a piece of it. And Guarneri will chase down his own missed shot, lob up the three, no good. And Kuchar, Guarneri, and Guarneri just took the ball away from his teammate. And MSJ with another opportunity here to run an offensive play as we're winding it down to 30 seconds to go. And I don't want to jinx him, but it's looking like Fairhaven's going to get the win as Kuchar will put it up, and no. Kuchar with a good-looking shot. Just didn't drop. 15 seconds, and Uber told to hold the ball. We'll give it to Reed. And MSJ told no foul. So it'll be a Fairhaven JV win. Congratulations to the Slaters. A good effort by MSJ. And get out there and support your student athletes as they hand the ball off. 37-28, Fairhaven's JV squad with the win.